Okay, welcome back. So right now we're going to talk about writing inequalities. Hopefully this is a little bit of a review for you, but the reason I'm doing this is because it's going to help us understand how to find domain and range of a continuous graph or of line segments of some sort that both have an x-axis and a y-axis. So just for this part, we're just going to focus on the x-axis. And since the x-axis is the horizontal axis, all of my number lines are going to go like this. So now, if I just have a number line and I put a dot on the number line and I want to represent what this is, well, this is just x is equal to 3, right? So if I am now representing something that looks like this, where I have a closed dot on 3, but I shade everything to the right of 3, well, these are all the numbers that are bigger than 3, but I also want it to be equal to 3 because I have a closed dot. So we would represent this as x is greater than or equal to 3. Now, if I were doing this as a domain, I would write it x such that. So I would add this x such that here, and I would put it in set notation, okay? So now the next one, close dot on 3, which means it's equal to 3, but it's shaded to the left. So these are all the numbers that are less than 3. So we would say that x is less than or equal to 3. And if I were asked to write it as a domain, you might see it written as x such that x is less than or equal to 3. The next one, the next one has an open dot on 3, and you're shading everything to the right. Now, because it's an open dot, an open dot means that 3 is not part of the solution or the domain. So we leave off the little line on the inequality symbol, and it's just x is greater than 3. If I wanted to write it as a domain, it might be written as x such that x is greater than 3. Now, the next one, open dot on 3 and shade it to the left, so now it would be x is less than 3. And so it would be x such that x is less than 3. Okay, now stop the video and try the next four problems. All right, so here are the answers to the next four. Notice that I did go ahead and I used the set notation with x such that. But if you left that part off, go ahead and just put it in now, and let's just practice doing that, because when we're doing domain and range, you're going to actually express it in that way. Notice that A and C have the little line on it, and B and D do not, because these are open dots. Also, you might want to notice that if you put your variable first, the inequality symbol is going in the same direction as your arrow, right? So since this one's shaded to the left, the arrow is going that way. This one, the arrow is going this way. This one's the arrow is going this way. This one, the arrow is going this way. And if you notice, it is the same here as well. Now that little trick only works if you're writing your variable first. All right, now let's take a look at these next four. These next four are called compound inequalities, and the reason they're compound inequalities is because there's two things going on at once. So if you take a look, this first one is pretty simple. If you look, you've got x here is gonna be less than negative two, or x is gonna be greater than five. And so the way that we would write this is we would write, if I was writing it as a domain, I would start with x such that, and then I would take this part of the graph, which would be x is less than negative 2, or then I would take this graph and make it x is greater than 5. So basically, this would cover all of the x values or every number on the number line, except for this section right here in the middle. All right, now, number 2 is a little bit different. Number 2 they're going towards each other, right? So you've got this closed dot on negative two going to the right, and this open dot on five going to the left. So now, just bear with me for a second. I'm just gonna write this part of the inequality. This is saying that x is greater than or equal to negative two. But this part right here is saying x is less than five. Now, because they're going into each other, we can do a combined notation. I call it an in-between notation, because basically, isn't x in between negative 2 and positive 5? 
Well, let me show you what this is going to look like. So I'm going to start by writing x such that, and we're not going to say x, we're going to start with, well, negative 2. So imagine if I took this inequality and I flipped it. If I wrote negative 2 first, well, then I could say that as negative 2 is less than or equal to x. So I would flip the sign, and then I can say, well, I can then take this part of it and call it x is less than 5. And so then I would close my brackets. So let me tell you what this means. If you read it starting in the middle, if you read it to the off to the left and then off over to the right, this is saying that x is between negative 2 but can equal negative 2. So x is being eaten by this symbol, so x is bigger than negative 2, but less than 5. So whenever you have it, this is called an and graph. Whenever you have the two going towards each other, then you would write a combined one. When you have two of them going in opposite directions, this would be an or graph. So you have to set, write them separately. Let's go ahead and try three and four, and then you can try some on your own. So for three, you've got two different things going on. So you're going to start with x such that, and then we're going to write our answer. So again, this one would be x is less than or equal to negative 2, or, and it would be or because they're going in opposite directions, x is greater than 5, just like that. All right? So number 4 is just like graph number 2. They are going into each other, so they're going, this is an and graph. So if you think about it, the value of x is all of the numbers in between negative 2 and 5, and because these are closed dots, they are including. So sometimes I like to write it so that I start off with x such that, and I'm like, okay, wait, x is between negative 2 and 5, and I'm going to put less than or equal to symbols in there. So it should be x such that negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. And the symbols will always be less than or equal if you're listing your numbers from least to greatest. And if you think about reading this, so the x is in the middle. If you think about it, all of these numbers, if you took these numbers and put them in for x, it should be a true statement, right? So x is going to be eaten. This symbol is eaten. So x is bigger than negative 2, but less than or equal to 5. So here are the answers to 5, 6, 7, and 8. Notice they're all very similar because they're all the in-between kind. Notice I went from least to greatest, and all of my symbols are less than symbols. And I just have to decide if there's a line or not a line based on if I have a closed dot or an open dot. And here are your answers to the next several. Notice 9, 10, 11, and 12, these are all OR graphs, so you have to list them separately, but these are combined. And so here, x is between 0 and 5. Here, x is between 2 and 9. All right, that's all for this video. Good luck with everything.